Well, hi everyone. This is Sony Artisan Don Smith coming to you today from my office in California in the beautiful Bay Area of Monterey. And we are entering week eight of shelter in place out here. And hopefully we're going to start to see things open up uh, like the rest of the country is slowly starting to get getting going again. And I know places around the world are starting to slowly open up from this terrible virus. So I hope wherever you're at watching this today, you're safe and things are starting to open up in your region. But let's get right into doing this image review today. I've picked six images that I really, really like that were sent in. And I want to start with this first one from Dave Ferrito. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing your name correctly, Dave, of these multiple lightning bolts in this uh, very cool sky. And uh, first of all, I want to point out, usually I would save this till the end, but uh, logo placement here I think is perfect, Dave, because it just complements uh, this triangular shape of these multiple bolts of lightning. Um, this is a really, really dramatic skies. The purples are just unique, and I really, I really love that color. I think it's adding to the shot. I also love this strong diagonal that this cloud is is taking. It all, it adds just a lot of dynamism to the shot. Uh, pulls your eye across the frame, and your processing super well done. Uh, the the couple little tips I would give you if I was gonna uh, edit this on my own is you can kind of see these two little lights. Now, I don't know if that's from a car. I would get those out of there and whatever this little structure, I would get that out as well as this structure over here, which looks to be some form of a crane. Content aware fill or the clone tool in Photoshop would be really, really easy and would uh, deal with that. But overall, just a fantastic picture. I love lightning photography. Uh, let's move on to one from Damien Palos. Uh, Palos, and I, again, I apologize if I'm pronouncing the last name wrong. This is a, a great use of a, what we call a slow shutter pan technique. I uh, actually, uh, Damien, excuse me, I went in and tried to check uh, what shutter speed you use, but unfortunately the metadata was stripped out. So I'm going to guess it was somewhere in the range of about a quarter of a second. And you can do this handheld, everyone. Uh, the, I always go, and Damien did this, with the prevailing lines. And the dominant lines in this image are vertical. So you would either start with the camera up and slowly pull down as you release the shutter, or vice versa. It's a, it's a little easier to do if you are on a tripod with a ball head. You can release the ball and just slowly pan up or down. Um, one of the things I, I love about this image, well, there's a lot of things, but this background, it looks like maybe you were in the fall and these are some sort of aspens. And uh, the one thing I would have tried to do is I would have went down on a knee and tried to take out a little bit of the sky. I don't think I would have wanted to eliminate it all to give my viewer a, a sense, but you know, we're really kind of getting into the range of an abstract here. And the other suggestion, let me get over in my develop mode and I'm gonna put in the crop tool and that's not the, uh, the cropping guide that I want. So I'm gonna tap the O key and we're gonna cycle through until I get to the rule of thirds, okay? And this dark trunked tree is really kind of your anchor point, Damien, for this shot. I would have maybe paid attention. To, you know, it's a hard call to do, I know when you're making these images, of, of getting it a little bit closer over in here, but that would have introduced more on this side of the frame and I'm not sure what's over there but it would have also kind of taken out this one little straggly guy right here that's so close to the edge. But overall, this is such a beautiful picture. Uh, it, it stands on its own. And uh, I believe your logo is works well because of the brightness 
of the scene up above here, we need a counterpoint to kind of balance that, don't we? And that just falls in a uh, perfect location. Okay, the next shot, and this one just blew my mind when I saw this. I would love to know where this was taken, uh, Dick. It, this is an image submitted by Dick Kell, and it's obviously uh, some electrified uh, flower bulb type of field. Oh my gosh, this is just an amazing shot. We have hills where I live out here in California that are just like this. And I wish somebody would try to do this. Uh, the cool thing is Dick got the Milky Way to line up directly over the center of this image. And that took some planning, Dick, I'm assuming with either the photographer's ephemeris, um, a tool, something like that that uh, you use to figure out when that Milky Way was going to be in the center of the scene. Just two suggestions, uh, and, and this is just you know my suggestions. I would actually try eliminating the, uh, I don't know if these are people, I'm assuming these are people on a path. I would try taking these out and just, just removing their silhouetted forms and see if that helps or hurts the picture. Maybe it, it, it helps because, you know, it does kind of form this line up through here. And, um, but it's just a suggestion. The other thing is the Milky Way is really overcooked as far as processing. But I think that was done probably on intent by Dick because, you know, this, this is not a natural scene either. This is, this is a lit scene. And, and I think if he would have just processed the Milky Way a little bit more normal to how it looks to the eye out in nature, it wouldn't have worked. So if you're gonna trip the light fantastic, <laughs> why not bump the color up in the Milky Way? And the last thing, let's look down at the logo. Um, Dick picked up one of the predominant colors down here in these blues and put it in there. And that was just a perfect placement of where to put it. There was a dark area in the picture down here and uh, I just love everything about this image. Just super well done. Would love to know where this was captured. Um, but I guess uh, we'll have to wait and see. Okay, let's go on to another one that really, really caught my eye. I really love this image. Uh, this was submitted by Jacques. Uh, I'm not gonna try to uh, make an attempt at a pronouncing your last name, uh, Jacques, because I'll probably um, botch it. So. A uh, lot of things that I love about this image. You have some very strong foreground elements, uh, starting with the windmill, the horses, the trees. I'm going to talk all about this in just a moment. And there's just gorgeous lighting overall with this soft light and this little bit of a storm cloud up here. And I really like the black and white effect. I, I, I think it just really works. The First thing that caught my eye was the processing and how you paid attention to the highlights here. And this just tends from this horse to especially this horse, pull my eye directly down this uh, darker patch of grass. I am assuming that's what that is. Uh, but it, it just pulls the eye in through the frame along with these lines. Now, You've heard me, if you watch my other review, talk about triangles. And we've got a lot of triangles in this image that helps with uh, eye movement in the scene. Starting from the dominant shot of the windmill, and I'm gonna make another assumption, this was captured somewhere in the Netherlands, uh, down to the horse, down through that horse. There's triangle, your triangle number one. We have another triangle here between these two horses and the windmill. Another one between the windmill, the horse, and this tree. That's eye movement. Then we have what we call is an implied line. Now, our eye brain will tend to fill in the gaps and move the eye down and along this tree line. And lastly, nice triangular shape that complements everything again with this cloud. About the only suggestion I could make on this, Jacques, and this is really nitpicking, is this little pole right in there. Uh, I'm assuming it's some kind of an electrical pole. I would take it out because it's so close to the edge and it interferes with this tree. And then I would maybe 
try to eliminate this tree and see if it helps or hurts. And that's where content aware fill would come in um, really easily. Now, the last thing, I would take your logo and I would move it completely over to this side of the frame. Remember, the logo is a photo element. And if I moved it here, that would create another triangle between that horse, the logo, and back up to these two horses. Really cool shot. Jacques, uh, love it. Another black and white submitted by James. And this is kind of that classic view shot of the spiral staircase that we see done so often. But I believe James went a little bit further here and put the, by introducing a human element, which what I like here creates a nice counterbalance to whatever this dark design is down here on the floor. So instead of just having it be all, all architecture, there is that human connection. And not only that, the person in the frame is wearing a dark shirt, which counterbalances and connects perfectly with this dark, um, again, whatever this artwork is on the floor. The only thing that's a little bit difficult is where you stood. You had a white border here that doesn't allow for the picture to complete. So, um, you know, I, I'm not so sure I, I, where the placement would be the best for this logo, but actually now I think it might be perfect because it is kind of complementing another triangle that you hear me talk about a lot. Really love this shot. Very well done, James. And the last one I wanted to show you very quick was one shot by Waddle Coys. Uh, just a Drop dead gorgeous image of a either a morning, early morning or late evening shot. And we got the beautiful color under the clouds. I always love the color contrast of anything warm and cool. It just creates visual tension. And then we have the, the repeating pattern, of this very uh, beautiful placement of these boats that happen to be out there. And they're very strong and dominant in the scene. I think the only thing I would do, Waddle, is you have such a beautiful, beautiful picture here, is that I would take the opacity definitely down on this logo because my eye wants to drift up in here where everything is happening, and this just serves to tug it uh, back down. So hopefully these tips have helped you guys out. Your vision is very strong. I love looking at your images. Keep them coming. We're going to plan to do this every month and uh, just get out there and keep creating. And wherever you are, stay safe, stay just abide by your local guidelines. That's all we can, we can expect. And we're going to get through this thing together. So until next month, this is Don Smith. You guys take care.